Hey guys, and welcome to the Moto Gumption YouTube channel with me, Ishmael Barantos, where I've created a series of videos following along the progress and how-tos of building the supercharged Yamaha FZ1. That will be raffled for charity at the end of the build. And on this one, guys, we are tackling porting of the cylinder head. So this guy will get some tender love and care, as well as, you know, opening up the passageways to let it breathe a little better. So without further ado, let's get started because I have about... 10 hours of work to put in this guy. Let's go. Oh, hey guys, still here I see. Well, if you like the content, please hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe, or go ahead and share with a buddy or a friend that you know that likes motorcycles, fast things, or engines in general. Let's get on to the porting. So first thing first, let's go ahead and go over the, some of the tools, or go over the tools I will be using. So these are gonna be the main things, or main items right here that will be doing the, uh, the excavating of the material, if you wanna say that. So these right here, which are uh, high-speed cutters. All right, I do, plan on breaking some of these I don't plan but I do suspect that we'll, some of these will be breaking not a big deal so just the Dremel brand they're pretty cheap next thing is going to be using some of these cartridges right here so after taking out the material I'll be using some of these to do the blending all right uh, I got multiple um, grits inside here I got some bigger ones in here hopefully I don't have to use these guys I got plenty I got 80 100 and 120 grit hopefully I don't have to use these because they are bigger and uh, I have very little room in this uh, little head to get in there. Now, I do have an air compressor and a the air die grinder, but the problem is is that my air compressor is only 21 gallons, so it's gonna run out of steam pretty quickly and it's always gonna be on, and it just, I don't wanna deal with it, especially with the, the little one here. So I made it the most efficient and quietest way. I actually um, bought a tabletop grinder that has a, um, I guess you could say, a rotary tool attachment, which is pretty cool, all right, because it actually goes up to uh, 10,000 RPM, which works out nicely. So, and I already have one of the attachments on here. I was just doing a test fit because I had to uh, grind on this one to get it inside the chuck. The next thing I want to talk about is what I'm starting on the head first. What I did was I put some Q-tips in each of the valve guides. So I got 20 Q-tips in here that covers the valve guides all the way to the bottom of the, uh, or inside the uh, combustion chamber. So that way I'm gonna try to focus on keeping all the debris on the other side where the ports are. Um, keep it out of this area. So I did that on all 20 valves. I also blocked off where the exhaust comes through, basically where you put your block off plates. So that way I don't have any other debris coming in here. I'm going to use some double-sided tape to uh, mask off this whole surface and uh, to help just keep a good seal. Not only that, they'll help keep any kind of dings or scratches. I will also be doing that on the other side because I mean, hey, we have a really good finish on the bottom side of the head. Why ruin it? So I'll be uh, making sure I mask off everything right there. And then around the combustion chamber, I'll be sealing it. I'll also be putting the spark plugs back in, guys, because that there's that hole that goes all the way through. It's gonna go right into this um, the top of the head. all the uh, taping done um, it's not the best tape job but it's gonna be um, good enough to go ahead and keep the uh, the cylinder uh, surface cylinder head surface uh, clean of scratches and gouges or anything like that not only that though it helps me keep all the uh, dirt and debris out of the uh, coolant and the oil passages which they will be getting clean but this way you know I know that I'm getting everything out of there I did the bottom side as well so that way this whole surface here is gonna be clean and clear of any of that stuff. The main thing here is not to just blow out all the material. The main thing here is to have better flow and transitions. Now, if you look here, the, uh, the stock head from manufacturer has a, uh, a slight chamfer here that helps you know, guide the air into the, uh, the port. Now, it is very abrupt. So it's just going and then it hits, hits a wall right here. 
So maybe you can see it, but anyways, it hits a wall right here. So I wanna take this and transition all this in. I'm gonna go ahead and remove some material, not a lot, but I'm gonna make these uh, ports smoother and for better flow. Now, they're all like that. They all have this chamfer that's abrupt, and then you hit a wall. So I mean, at least they do have something. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see in there, but you can see that line that goes all the way to the other side. It's a casting line. Now, you'll be able to see it right here. That right there is a casting line. So I'm gonna get all these imperfections. Oh yeah, there you go. You can really see it now. And each port has these. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on the intake side. Um, man, I got a long night ahead of me. I'm starting this at like 10.30 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a Knot Monster. Go ahead and get this going. I don't like energy drinks too much. Don't really drink them, but this is gonna really gonna help me right now. So basically, these guys right here will be getting a knife edge as well um, for all of these runners. Uh, they're a little bit rounded, a little thick, so they're gonna have some void there. I'm gonna just make them a knife edge so that the, um, the air has a better just cut path and not having to uh, go around this. So we're gonna do that as well. Uh, like I said, Guys, this is not for power, this is but for better flow, and with better flow will come power. Not hogging this thing out, we're not looking to push stupid boost on this build. For mine, might be a little different. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So pretty much the hard transition that they have going in here from the factory chamfer, I pretty much removed that and actually had a better gradual path to the ports, which will help flow and velocity, but like I said, we're not looking for high horsepower gain, just better transition of the air. Went ahead and took a break on the bottom side right here. I'm gonna flip the head over so I can actually get the top side of this, uh, this port, which make it some pretty good progress. The cutter I'm using actually is pretty much gave me the finish I already need. So I'm just gonna go back there with the cartridge and uh, get it where it's uh, nice and smooth without actually being a polish. And we're gonna go ahead and go to, to the next ports. But this one right here is already probably taking about 20 minutes just for the bottom side, which is uh, quite a bit of time. So you can imagine how much time I'm actually spent on this head. Get some really good progress, opening this up, getting those transitions better. I have a little bit of a spot right here that I need to adjust but other than that so far it's looking good this cutter i'm like really impressed with so all right i'll catch you back up another update here in a little bit so just doing a quick update hope this thing camera would even all right so as you can see right there in the back of those uh those ports you can see all that casting um, you would probably call it casting flash or defect or you know, that would be called burrs. But anyways, you have those uh, imperfections there. Now, this is one that has not been touched. This is the intake. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like after the fact. <clears throat> All right, so no casting marks going from right to left. All of those have been... We're looking pretty good as far as um, opening them up and 
good transitions removing all the casting marks and stuff now i'm going to go ahead and get in there with a uh, cartridge which is one of these little doodads right here so we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, get some more of that uh, that roughness out a little bit smoother but not a polish because we don't want that on the intake side um, on the exhaust side i don't really know if I'm even going to really hit it, just move some of the minor imperfections and call it good. But um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into this, guys, and uh, try to be quick about it because I'm tired of this head already. guys and I am done with the intake and exhaust side that's all the work I'm gonna be doing to this head I am tired of it <laughs> anyways so this is a pile of the material that came out of both the intake and exhaust side now this is not all of it I did have about half of this uh, that I threw away in, in a trash can but I am not recovering so if you want to just visually take half of this put it uh, with this pile that's how much I removed from both sides now here is a quarter for relation on how much I removed, all right? It's a good amount. Not a lot, but definitely not a little. Also, I wanted to use this quarter as relation on how big these ports are. They're tiny, guys. It's amazing that this bike can make 200 plus horsepower even with forced induction. So, that's the exhaust ports, all right? Or exhaust exit. Here's the ports where the valves are. This quarter is clearly bigger than the exhaust valve and definitely oversizing the uh, intake side so yeah any and all porting done to this head especially with forced induction where you're cramming air in, in there it's going to be it's going to be a good deal for it um, now on naturally aspirated engines you want to focus on velocity of the air getting in and getting out all right uh, with force induction, you have something cramming it in there. So any and all porting to this is gonna be great. And like, again, we did not hog it out. We did a good job on transitions, removing casting airs, as well as just those those blocks that, that air has to go around, you know? So again, back to the quarter. If anybody doesn't know the size of a quarter, it's about 24, it's a little over 24 millimeters or a little and a little over 0.95 of an inch. So, I mean, guys, this head is going to breathe so much better. I mean, look how much material we actually removed. So, all right, guys. That's all I got for uh, <laughs> this head, really. All right, guys. I am finally done with this freaking head, and I don't ever want to do another port job. Even though I probably will for my turbo build, I don't want to. I have pretty much close to 11 hours in this thing, and my hands are still vibrating like I'm like I'm still holding the the engraver or Dremel, whatever you want to call it, the rotary tool. It feels like I'm still holding the rotary tool. Like I've been mowing the lawn for a few hours. So for all those old timers that used to port their head their heads by hand, shout out to you, really. It's crazy. But here is the finished product, guys. Alright. Here is the exhaust side that has every bit of treatment in every port as the other. Here's where the valves will be going, and here is the showboater, the intake side. Very, very well done. I took plenty of time doing each and every one, with each one having the same, uh, the same um, treatment as far as removing certain features that are impeding flow, as well as casting uh, imperfections. So. This thing is ready for boost. It will flow a lot better than my head did, and hopefully we see those improvements in the horsepower gains. But guys, so 
So for the next one, what I plan on doing is the fuel system, getting it prepared for a return style, as well as buttoning this up and putting it together. And hopefully we can throw this thing in next week or the week after. So until then guys, see you later.